What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'll talk about the best perks in Call of Duty Vanguard. This is going to be a list of perks that you need to be running. I'm not going to go over every individual perk. I'm just going to go over what's best in each perk slot. Perk 1, Perk 2, and Perk 3. Before I get into all the details, be sure you check out everything down in the description. The community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky. You can use code GRAVE at checkout for 5% off. And also Amazon Associates. That's where I list all the things I use every day when gaming or recording videos, some stuff you guys might be interested in. And also check out the merch store. It is linked in the description as well. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you would hit that sub button. Now, when it comes to the perk one slot, this is where a lot of people have a hard time deciding what they want to run. Because in my opinion, there's four really good perks here. The ones that I'm going to leave out that I don't think are necessary is going to be Dauntless and Cold-Blooded. Cold-Blooded is not bad. A lot of people like to run cold-blooded you know, in past Call of Duty titles, but in this game, we do not have the option for any kind of wild cards. You can equip more perks in an individual slot. So this game, we just have the ability to run a perk in perk one, two, and three. We don't have the option for that wild card. So I don't think cold-blooded is needed. Another reason I don't think it is needed is there's no thermal scopes in this game. Of course, it is a World War II game, and a lot of people like to run cold-blooded because of thermal, scope, uh, thermal scopes along with those kill streaks. So cold-blooded and dauntless, I think, can be left out. Of course, first on the list here is Ghost. Of course, this is going to be undetectable while moving by spy planes, enemy intel, and field mics, and it reduces the effectiveness of local informants. Of course, you do have to be moving. A lot of people like when they add Ghost into the game with that kind of criteria. Uh, a lot of people aren't fans of the old-style Ghost where you can just have it on and it does not matter if you're moving or not. You can just sit still and camp in the corner and not be seen. But Ghost is always a go-to. The next here in the list is Ninja. Ninja was not in the beta. A lot of people wanted to see Ninja back in the game, and it is in here in Perk 1. And of course, they put it here on purpose, I think, because they knew this is going to be a difficult choice for a lot of players. You can move silently, take reduced damage when falling, and reduces the effectiveness of enemy tracker perks. Keep in mind, there still is that option, if you do not want to run in, uh, Ninja, to run um, something like the field upgrade dead silence now this is the field upgrade we had like in modern warfare but it is a bit different so when it says uh, a bit different when it says the recharge rate is fast it means fast it temporarily makes your footsteps silent and makes you undetectable by spy planes which was not in the game in modern warfare so you're pretty much getting the benefit of dead silence and of ghost now one thing that you can keep in mind uh, that you may not have noticed if you have not used it yet just like modern warfare it is on a timer. So once you pop it, there's a timer there. You get to keep this, you know, build upgrade for so long. But every time you get a, a kill, it will reset that timer. So if you're getting a lot of kills, you know, within 10, 15 seconds of each other, if you're just running through a team in the spawn, you're going to keep resetting this dead silence uh, field upgrade. So that is an option if you do not want to run, uh, you know, just run dead silence or, you know, ninja outright in that perk one slot. Survival training, of course, this is what our normal attack mask is. It says resistant to stun effects and immune to gas. And then, of course, fortified is what we used to you know, know as a flak jacket. It reduces damage from explosives by 15%. Has a damage reduction is doubled while you're mounted, crouched, or prone. and reduces health regen delay from explosives. So you have a kind of a difficult choice. In my opinion, if you're going to play things objective-wise, if you're playing a lot of search and destroy, uh, Dom, whatever the case may be, a hard point, and you like to stay on that objective, this is very handy, especially with that damage reduction while mounted, crouched, or prone. Survival training would kind of be the same option here. If you're hanging around a, you know, an objective, I, I think this would be a pretty good choice, but with no trophy systems in game, I think Fortified is the better choice out of the two. Now, there may be trophy systems added in later on. This is one of the first CODs in a long time. We haven't had the option to have a trophy system. I know the pro players are asking for one. But at the same time, grenades are not exactly crazy in this game as they have been in the past. I've been around a lot of grenades that haven't blown me up, you know, that are really, really close compared to other uh, Call of Duty titles where it seems like I would have died. I think out of these two, Fortified is the best. And when it comes to Ninja and Ghost, it's going to kind of depend. If you play a lot of team, you don't really... Just run and gun, you just kind of move around the map, you know, check your corners, you kind of, you know, methodically, you're not really camping, but not in a huge, you know, hurry. I think Ghost is good. If you're going to run around, run and gun in Team Deathmatch, I think Ninja is great. If you're going to play Search and Destroy, Ninja is great. Just keep in mind, if you're playing TDM, 
I would recommend probably uh, running a jammer or a counter UAV. That way, if you got kind of get caught out in an enemy spawn, you're on a good kill streak. You have a way to kind of counter the uh, you know other team's UAVs. The good thing about this game is it is kill streaks. You're not having to worry about people just spamming UAVs. But at the same time, the game is new, so most everybody in game is going to run a UAV. Uh, the next perk uh, here in perk two that everybody's going to run, they're going to call it the crutch perk, is going to be radar. And I think out of all of these, there's only two perks within Perk 2 that are really good or really worth using. Some of the other ones are not bad. Engineer right now, a lot of people are reporting that it's broken. But Radar is what everybody is calling that crutch perk because enemies appear on your minimap when they fire an unsilenced weapon. So what we used to have in game is automatically, if an enemy was shooting an unsilenced weapon, you would always see them on your radar. But as we know in Modern Warfare, that was not the case. A lot of people didn't like that in Modern Warfare. At least in this game, we have the option to use it as a perk. But at the same time, I think a lot of people are looking over forward intel. A lot of people think forward intel is going to give you an idea of, you know, uh, that bigger map so you can see a little bit more. Maybe you can have an idea of where players are going to spawn. But if you have not used this yet, I would highly recommend it. Because not only does it show where, you know, a, a bigger mini map so you can kind of see where enemies are spawning. But it also pings the area they're going to spawn in. So you're going to see a little ping flash if there's an enemy spawning anywhere around you. So this gives you a very good idea of where people are spawning at if somebody's behind you, to your left, to your right, in front of you. Now, if you have uh, teammates running UAVs and UAVs are up, you have a UAV on yourself, forward intel is extremely overpowered in my opinion. But it is also very, very helpful for just finding those enemy team spawns. So don't think Radar is an absolute in Perk 2. I would recommend checking out Forward Intel. I think both of these are very, very good depending on your play style. If you're going to be a running gunner, Radar might be the best. If you're playing more methodical, a little slower, Forward Intel might be the best. I think you can still do very well with Forward Intel running and gunning. So like I said, don't think Radar is the only go-to in Perk 2. I would definitely check out Forward Intel as well. Now when it comes to the Perk 3 slot, there are a few good options here, in my opinion. Of course, one I don't have unlocked yet. As you can see, I'm only 52. I hadn't quite hit 54 yet, but Scavenger is always a must for a lot of players that can go on long kill streaks. Now, keep in mind, you can run that ammo crate uh, if you would like, you know, as your extra, um, you know, your extra ability here in your field upgrades. You have the option to run a supply box for ammo and that kind of stuff. But if you do not want to have to worry with that, you want to use something else, Scavenger is going to be a go to. Uh, overkill, of course, if you'd like to run a sniper and something else, that's not bad. Tactician, once again, not a bad one in my opinion. Restocks your tactical equipment every 30 seconds. Uh, demolition gives you an extra lethal on spawn. And thrown lethals and tacticals display an indicator showing the path of the lethal or tactical, which is something new compared to past years where we've had a perk pretty much like this. But in my opinion, if you're a player that likes to run around, run fast, uh, run and gun, uh, try to get to a bomb quickly and maybe search and destroy or try to get to an area fast with something like, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, a domination or hardpoint style game mode, I think double time and lightweight. Th these are my two favorites personally. But like I said, keep in mind, I don't have scavenger unlocked yet. I've been running double time, uh, double time on all my ARs, and I've been running lightweight on all of my SMGs. Now, of course, lightweight just increases your movement speed in general. Double time is going to give you double the du uh, duration of tax sprint, increasing crouch movement speed by 30%. This one is not bad to run on SMGs either. If you're playing search and you want to get to a bomb quickly, you use your knife, you use double time, you're going to get there in a hurry. But overall, for me, like playing team deathmatch and domination, Lightweight is very, very handy on a submachine gun. And personally for me, double time is very handy on a AR. Like I said, you don't can't really overlook the other things. Demolition, uh, Tactician, and Overkill are not bad choices. But I think double time, lightweight, and scavenger will be the go-to for most people. And those are the ones I would really recommend. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know if you've been uh, using any other perks that I did not mention in this. Let me know if you've tried out this forward intel perk. Because like I said, if you have not tried it, I would highly, highly recommend it. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.